Good morning, everyone. Today we celebrate the memorial of St. Jerome, priest and doctor of the church, and the entrance antiphon is, Blessed indeed is he who ponders the law of the Lord day and night. He will yield his fruit in due season. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. My brothers and sisters, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Well, St. Jerome is known as a great scripture scholar, uh, but not a perfect person, as I'll mention in my homily. Uh, So let us come before the Lord as we are, admitting to God our faults and failings and asking God to continue to mold us into being the people he calls us to be. And we pray together, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us all of our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who gave the priest St. Jerome a living and tender love for sacred scripture, grant that your people may be ever more fruitfully nourished by your word and find in it the fount of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Nehemiah. The whole people gathered as one in the open space before the water gate. And they called upon Ezra, the scribe, to bring forth the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord prescribed for Israel. On the first day of the seventh month, therefore, Ezra, the priest, brought the law before the assembly which consisted of men, women, and those children old enough to understand. Standing at one end of the open place that was before the water gate, he read out of the book from daybreak until midday in the presence of the men, the women, and those children old enough to understand. And all the people listen attentively to the book of the law. Ezra, the scribe, stood on a wooden platform that had been made for the occasion. He opened the scroll so that all the people might see it for he was standing higher up than any of the people. And as he opened it, all the people rose. Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and all the people, their hands raised high, answered, Amen, Amen. Then they bowed down and prostrated themselves before the Lord, their faces to the ground. As the people remained in their places, Ezra read plainly from the book of the law of God, interpreting it so that all could understand what was read. Then Nehemiah, that is, his excellency, 
And Ezra, the priest scribe, said to all the people, Today is the holy is holy to the Lord your God. Do not be sad and do not weep, for all the people were weeping as they heard the words of the law. He said further, Go, eat rich foods and drink sweet drinks and a lot portions to those who had nothing prepared. For today is holy to our Lord. Do not be saddened this day, for rejoicing in the Lord must be your strength. And the Levites quieted all the people, saying, Hush, for today is holy, and you must not be saddened. Then all the people went to eat and drink, to distribute portions, and to celebrate with great joy, for they understood the words that had been expounded to them. The Word of the Lord. The precepts of the Lord give joy to the heart. The precepts of the Lord give joy to the heart. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The decree of the Lord is trustworthy, giving wisdom to the simple. The precepts of the Lord gives joy to the heart. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The command of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eye. The precepts of the Lord give joy to the heart. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true, all of them just. The precepts of the Lord give joy to our heart. They are more precious than gold, than a heap of purest gold, sweeter also than syrup or honey for the comb. The precepts of the Lord give joy to the heart. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus appointed 72 other disciples whom he sent ahead of him in pairs to every town and place he intended to visit. He said to them, the harvest is abundant, but the laborers are few. So ask the master of the harvest to send out laborers for his harvest. Go on your way. Behold, I am sending you like lambs among wolves. Carry no money bag, no sack, no sandals, and greet no one along the way. Into whatever house you enter, first say, Peace to this household. If a peaceful person lives there, your peace will rest on them. If not, it will return to you. Stay in the same house and eat and drink what is offered to you, for the laborer deserves his payment. 
Do not move about from one house to another. Whatever town you enter and they welcome you, eat what is set before you. Cure the sick in it and say to them, the kingdom of God is at hand for you. Whatever town you enter and they do not receive you, go out into the streets and say, the dust of your town that clings to our feet, even that we shake off against you. Yet know this, the kingdom of God is at hand. I tell you, it will be more tolerable for Sodom on that day than for that town. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, that first reading about uh, the rebuilding of the temple and Nehemiah and Ezra reading, reading the scriptures, the law to the people, and the people weeping uh, is a great description of St. Jerome, who loved God's word. He devoted his life to it. He studied it. He prayed with it. He translated it. And to this day is one of the greatest scripture scholars ever in the church and uh, actually composed, translated the Vulgate, the Hebrew scriptures, the Greek scriptures into Latin, and that lasted in the church for many, many centuries, and still is a very honored translation of the scriptures. And so Jerome was, was so dedicated, so in love with God, in love with his word, in love with the Lord, but Jerome also had a certain amount of baggage. He apparently was a very passionate person, but also very temperamental, had a quick temper, could be sarcastic, could be um, kind of a, a grumpy person, and apparently did not have a lot of respect for women. So not a perfect person by any stretch of the imagination, and yet uh, the church calls him a saint because of that overwhelming love for God and for God's word. He was an ascetic, he was a mystic, uh, lived in a cave, lived in a desert for many, a number of years, and then lived in the cave in Bethlehem uh, as he translated the scriptures for many years and lived by himself. And perhaps that was his choice, maybe the choice of others. Nobody wanted to live with him. But again, uh, that whole sense of God calling everyone, even imperfect people, to follow him, to be saints is the same thing that he uh, calls each of us to, that sense of holiness. And, and whatever our personalities might be, in, in, in spite of the baggage that every one of us carries, he calls us to be holy, to be uh, his follower. And in the gospel, Jesus um, challenges us as he sends out his 72 disciples. Uh, he says a lot of things to them, but one of the things he says is, don't take anything with you, basically. Don't, don't carry the normal stuff. Uh, just go travel lightly. And in a sense, that's his advice for all of us throughout life, that we don't carry a lot of baggage with us. Again, St. Jerome had his baggage of his personality, his temperament. And again, we carry so many things with us from our past, our woundedness, our prejudices, our fears, and so on. And Jesus continued telling us, let it go, but leave that behind you. Move forward uh, in a, in, and travel lightly uh, in life. And he says, even uh, as they go into these towns, to say, peace be with you as you enter a house. And if that peace is not received, don't, don't let that disturb your peace. Let that peace come back to you. If they don't receive you, don't get into arguments. Don't, uh, don't let that burden you. Don't carry on that baggage of rejection. Just shake off the dust of, of that town, of, of that of that uh, experience and move on in life. Again, a great, uh, uh, great advice for all of us not to let the negativity that we might receive in life, the hurts, the, all the things that can happen to us, not to let that weigh us down, to travel lightly and to be his messengers, to carry that lightness, that peace. And then this is the first reading says, the joy, let the joy of the Lord be your strength. Don't burden yourself with unnecessary things, and you will find that uh, that is uh, the, the freedom that God wants us all to have. So may we, in our own ways, uh, be like St. Jerome, uh, dedicated and focused on the Lord in spite of our faults and failings, 
and not let those hold us back from who uh, God wants to, to mold us, to shape us to be in our lives. And now we stand and offer our prayers to the Lord this morning. Lord, we thank you for calling each one of us to follow you, to be your disciples, your apostles. You choose us and send us in spite of our faults and failings. And may we uh, allow you to cleanse us and to take away the baggage that so often we carry in our hearts. Help us to be free. We pray to the Lord. Lord, help us to love your word as did St. Jerome. The word that you give us in the scriptures help us to nurture our souls, uh, not just when we come to Mass, but to pray the Bible, pray with it, to study it, to read it, and to share its message of love and goodness with others. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all scripture scholars, those who study God's word to help us understand it more deeply. And we pray that our church would be God's instrument of bringing his word of peace and joy and love to our world. We pray to the Lord. Our mass this morning is especially offered for the repose of Geronimo Mikor L.A. So Geronimo which is uh, another form of Jerome. We lift him up to the Lord and his loved ones. We pray to the Lord. And in a few moments of silence, let us offer to God our personal needs. We pray to the Lord. Lord, may we follow you with light hearts, with Uh, freedom that you call us to have and may we carry your love and goodness to our world we make our prayers through Christ our Lord please be seated and if you wish to I invite you to sing number 373 in your books here I am Lord 373 I the Lord of sea and sky I have heard my people's cry, all who dwell in dark and sin, my hand will save. I who made the stars of night, I will make their darkness bright Who will bear my light to them Whom shall I send Here I am, Lord Is it I, Lord my brothers and sisters, that this, our sacrifice, and that we ourselves might be acceptable to our loving and almighty God. Grant us, O Lord, that having meditated on your word, following the example of St. Jerome, we may more eagerly draw near to offer your majesty the sacrifice of salvation. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. 
For as on the festival of St. Jerome you bid your church rejoice, so too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life, teach her by his words of preaching, and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess a resurrection till you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Jerome and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the worlds. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis our Pope and Jose our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory 
through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. We stand once again and we pray in the words that Jesus, our Savior, taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Thank you. Now let us carefully uh, offer to each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. My brothers and sisters, behold Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. And together we say once again the act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. May these holy gifts we have received, O Lord, as we rejoice in celebrating St. Jerome, stir up the hearts of your faithful so that, attentive to sacred teachings, they may understand the path they are to follow and, by following it, obtain life everlasting through Christ our Lord. Just a reminder that tomorrow night we have a healing mass. It'll be in English and in Spanish. We'll be offering the sacrament of the the anointing of the sick. And it's for anybody who has any kind of ailment, physical, spiritual, psychological, emotional, to come to the Lord for healing. So please come if you can tomorrow night, 730 here in the church. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us go in peace, glorifying the Lord by our lives. Thank you.